And I have to tell you, you know, Obamacare is really, I think, the worst thing that has happened in this nation since slavery. And it is, in a way, it is slavery, in a way, because, because it is making all of us subservient. All right, folks, there you go. Ben Carson uh, speaking, uh, I guess, uh, late last week um, and uh, making a, a very controversial remark. The left is up in arms. Right now is our guest. Uh, glad to welcome him into the show, David Swerdlick uh, from TheRoot.com. Hey, David, how are you? Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thanks for being flexible with the time. All right, no so so you wrote a piece, and uh, you were one of those taking uh, exception to uh, what Ben Carson had to say. Why so? Well, you know, I think it's really two things about uh, Dr. Carson's statement. He's obviously a very smart guy. He's a neurosurgeon. He's a philanthropist, an author. But, you know, if he wants people to take him seriously now that he's doing this sort of second act in politics – then he ought to make serious statements. And saying that Obamacare is the worst thing in the nation since slavery is, uh, is not a serious statement. You know, it's over the top. It, uh, it disregards a ton of American history in between slavery and now. And, uh, and Steve, you know, I mean, the, it, it, it just sounds like he's just trying to grab headlines, which if that's all he's trying to do is fine. But, you know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't reflect well on him uh, in terms of whatever he does with his career. Well, so. well how does, okay, sort of like uh, the president saying that uh, the Republicans uh, are hostage takers, have a gun to the head of the American public, are demanding ransom, sort of like Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid uh, saying that they're arsonists and anarchists um, and, uh, and uh, uh, other people calling them jihadists. Uh, this, is, this is Republican jihad. Uh, same, same exact thing? No, it's not the exact thing. I don't agree, by the way, with the president or any other Democrats using the gun imagery, the gun to the head imagery. Uh, you know, to me, that's, you know, Democrats have accused Republicans of that in the past, so Democrats shouldn't do it either. I also think calling people jihadists is just also completely skews the whole discussion. But uh, w when you're talking about Dr. Carson, again, a respected guy, it, you know, a, a famous brain surgeon, not just a brain surgeon, um, coming out and saying, oh, this is the worst thing in, in, in the history in our country since slavery. I mean, first of all, there have been so many things. There's been segregation. There's been the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. The idea that, oh, between then and now, there's, there's been no, n nothing that, that, you know, imposes on people's freedom, and then all of a sudden this, this is the comparison point. It, it, it just makes him... Uh, you know, it, it just makes him look like he's just out there for the headlines. And, by the way, um, you know, if Republicans are serious, as they've professed, in bringing particularly people of color more into the Republican and conservative movements, uh, this is the exact opposite of the way to do that. Why, why, why would that be? First of all, for, uh, Ben Carson has an opinion. And if that's his opinion, and I got to tell you, if you, I, I'm not going to agree with his opinion or not, because you make valid points, I wouldn't put the internment of Japanese Americans in, in that category. Uh, but there have been a lot of uh, you know bad things, uh, you know, uh, segregation and what uh, this, you know, what uh, uh, what, what African Americans went through in this country, you know, before the Civil Rights Act. Um, but um, you know, he is black; he's well aware of that, and he knows this bill inside out. And I know something about this bill too. And if this bill leads to what many of us fear this bill will lead to, as it has in Canada, as it has in Great Britain, and it's the same principle, uh, not being able to see a doctor, waiting uh, months and months to see a specialist, uh, death panels that decide based on a formula whether or not uh, an 80-year-old man or a 70-year-old man is should get the operation or be given a, a sugar pill. Uh, I would say that that's right up there. That's a complete change in our culture, because right now we value our parents and our grandparents and and, and, and our disabled children. And we do anything and everything we can to keep them alive just one more day. And now we're talking about something that's going to come between. The government's going to step in and is going to dictate. Um, as Obama said to that woman at a, at a, at a, a, a town hall before he ran the, when he was running the first time, about a 100-year-old mother, she's full of life. And he said, well, you know, we can't take an individual circumstance into consideration because the cost of keeping people alive in their later years is blah, blah, blah. This is a complete 
culture shift. So I don't think he's out of line when he compares it to something as significant as slavery. Well, look, Steve, you know, two things. One, he has the freedom of speech, right? Dr. Carson has the freedom to say what he wants, express it how he feels. He has the platform. But then people also have the freedom of speech to criticize him and sort of come back and say, hey, whoa, you, this, is, this is out of bounds. You're, you're, you're oh, I'm, not, so I'm, I'm not knocking you for criticizing no, him. No, Absolutely, no, yeah. No, no, I'm saying that, that it, it, we all have the freedom of speech, so he can, he can say what he wants. I'm just suggesting that, you know, if he wants to be taken seriously by the people he – presumably wants to be taken seriously by, he might want to come up with a different way to raise his objection to Obamacare. But to your point, Steve, about Obamacare, I don't want to disappoint you. I'm not going to stand here now and actually be an Obama, Obamacare defender, right? I actually think there are going to be quite a few problems with the law moving forward, not just all this silly website stuff. But I, it, the problem is the comparison. The problem I'm talking about is the comparison to slavery. You know, you, you, there are British people and Canadian people who don't like their health care system. I don't think... Who are die, no, 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 not don't like, but who die. Who don't okay, get to see I, a specialist most, and die. I don't think most British and Canadian people would compare their health care system to slavery, number one. And, it, and, and, what, and what we've got here is, you know, to the best I can tell, I'm more of a politics guy than a policy guy, but this is like a nationalization of Mitt Romney's Massachusetts. No, well, system. the problem is I've spoken uh, when Tom Daschle, uh, who turned out to be too big a tax cheat to be Kathleen Sebelius, whereas Timmy Geithner was a small tax sheet so he got to be the treasury secretary tom dashell is the is the author of this whole thing and it's based on the british plan and he wrote a book about three four years ago after it right before it was passed or right after it was passed and i i he didn't know who, who i was and i you know he came on to plug the book and i said all right i said so an 85 year old man needs a double bypass what do you do and he said, well, and I, he said, this is, I'm almost quoting verbatim. Well, you know, you got to think of other alternatives. You give him a, uh, uh, a pill or you put him in a hospice. I said, well, a pill won't work. That's not going to clean your arteries out. And a hospice is where you go to die. You want him to die? And he said, well, you said it. I didn't. I said, but you said hospice. So that's the mindset. And that is a completely different mindset than we have in this country right now. Do you agree with that? I think it's a completely different mindset from the way it, you've described it and then the way the proponents are describing it. Again, Steve, I'm not, I'm, I am not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, Obamacare is going to be great for everybody. What I am going to say, though, is that, A, it, 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 it's on a different order than American slavery. Okay, that's number one. And number two is, is that, look, if you have you, what, what I think makes people like Dr. Carson, who has written about this, and he actually has put some ideas out in writing better than what he says in his speeches. But when you've got people like Dr. Carson talking about this, one of the reasons that they're not convincing people who would, might otherwise be convinced is, is that they're putting this in such stark terms. Look, Republicans and conservatives, to my knowledge, have not put forth an alternative plan. Maybe they don't well, want they, to. Well, they, they, they have. But listen, we're up. We've got less than a minute. Yeah. So, David, I just want to get this in real quick. To me, there's really no difference between that and anarchists and arsonists and gun to the head and hostage taking and uh, kidnappers no difference at all and, and they're both equally as guilty if if if, if uh, he's guilty so are the democrats in the president final word uh, i'm gonna survey my canadian friends right now no 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 no, no. i'm saying i'm saying yeah. that president with his incendiary language no, is just as guilty no i, I again i Gun to the head was one, was one too far for me, but it's it's they're they're on different orders. Uh, Calling a policy passed by Congress five years ago on the order of slavery is is is, is an outlier. All right, uh, uh, listen, David. I hope you'll come back, David Swerdlick from the Root dot com. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, appreciate it. All right, folks. So we will take our eight seven seven Newsmax. When we come back, um, now they're calling it sabotaged. We'll talk to Susan Ferrecchio, Chief Congressional Correspondent, Washington Examiner. The Democrats are at it again, folks. Steve Mulsberg's show. Don't go away.